Hello, hello! A warm welcome to all flower enthusiasts tuning in for another fun-filled romp through the world of baking on our podcast, Breaking Bread. I'm your host, Rachel Parker, and I'm thrilled to let you in on what we've got lined up for today's episode. Yes, you guessed it right. We're going to get to the heart, or should I say, the powdery soul of every piece of bread, the wonderful world of flour. So strap in and let's sift through some fascinating flour facts and need your knowledge about this indispensable ingredient. Let's get this dough rolling with a bit of botany. Our journey begins at the very source, a small, modest grain of wheat. Picture a vast, sun-kissed wheat field swaying gently with the breeze. Each stalk, crowned with kernels, holds a world of possibilities within it. Now these small kernels are not as simple as they appear. Each of them is composed of three main components. Brace yourself for a trip inside the humble wheat kernel. We start with the bran, the hard protective outer layer, a treasure trove of fiber and B vitamins. Inside the bran, you'll find the endosperm, the food storage center of the kernel, teeming with starch. Lastly, the germ, the embryo of the kernel, is a nutrient-rich wonder in its own right. The type of flour we get is determined by which parts of the kernel are used and how finely they are ground. An exciting piece of trivia for your next dinner party, don't you think? Moving on, let's take a stroll down the flour aisle of your local grocery store. A whole world of flour types awaits you, and each bag of flour boasts its unique personality and baking purpose. There's all-purpose flour, the versatile actor in the baking world, a mix of hard and soft wheat, capable of maintaining the balance between protein and starch. The sturdier bread flour, which with a higher protein content, forms stronger gluten networks, translating into mouth-watering crusty breads and pizza crusts. Whole wheat flour, the no-waste option which incorporates every part of the kernel giving your bread a nuttier flavor and a dense, wholesome texture. The delicate and dainty pastry flour, with lower protein content, indispensable for creating flaky, melt-in-your-mouth pastries. And of course, semolina made from durum wheat that's perfect for pasta and a dream ingredient for achieving a lovely outer crust to bread. Let's not forget our other flour friends like rye, spelt, and a variety of gluten-free options, each bringing a unique twist and texture to your baking. Are you ready for a little science lesson? Let's talk about the darling of the baking world, gluten. Gluten forms when your flour meets water. The proteins glutenin and gliadin link up to form a complex network. Gluten has a major impact on the texture of bread. It is what gives our breads their chewy, hearty texture. Different types of flours have varying protein contents which affect gluten development. Remember our friend, the high-protein bread flour? It is what gives your favorite artisan loaves their crusty goodness. On the other hand, the low-protein cake flour is responsible for the tender, crumbly sweets. Choosing the right flour for your bread can make or break your baking game. So here's how to navigate the flour minefield. Save your all-purpose flour for the quintessential white sandwich loaves. It's a match made in baking heaven. For your chewy artisan breads and open crumb structures, you won't go wrong with the high-protein bread flour. For those dense, flavorful whole grain loaves, you can experiment with whole wheat or rye flours. And my personal favorite tip, don't shy away from mixing flours. Who knows? You may come up with a blend that suits your palate perfectly. Ensuring that you're consistent with your flour choice is critical for achieving reproducible bake-off results. Many bakers, including our good friends at Bob's Red Mill, cannot emphasize enough the importance of quality and consistency in their flour products. Before we part our baking ways, here's your baking tip of the day. If you're ever substituting whole wheat flour for white flour, start by replacing just 25% of the white flour. Whole wheat flour tends to drink more water, so be prepared to adjust your liquid measurements accordingly. As we brush off the flour from this episode, I hope you've gained a newfound appreciation for this versatile pantry staple. Every type of flour, be it all-purpose, whole wheat, or an alternative, every bag is teeming with delicious possibilities. And before we sign off, a huge shout out to our trusted partner, Bob's Red Mill. Their steadfast commitment helps us ensure that our baking adventures start on the right foot. Or shall we say, the right flour. That's all for today, folks. Until we meet again, keep your flour bins brimming and your ovens preheated. And yes, do check out our show notes where you'll find links to helpful resources, including Bob's Red Mill's comprehensive guide to flowers. This is Rachel Parker, bidding you happy baking and signing off from Breaking Bread.